Look at these cute animals. You will have noticed that they are different and vary in characteristics. Yes, some are dogs and some are cats, but notice how they also vary within their species too? One dog is big and the other is a different colour, and the cats all have different eyes. Variation in species is important in making individuals in a population unique. But why is there so much variation? Let's take a closer look at the genetic structure of our furry friends. Variations can be due to mutations, genetics, the environment, or a combination. Mutations change DNA in various ways, having neutral, beneficial, or negative effects. Good mutations increase an individual's chance of survival, so they're more likely to pass on these traits to future generations. If the species does reproduce, the random mixing of alleles from both parents can produce extended genetic variation within a population. This means some individuals are better adapted to their environment than others, allowing natural selection to take place. The idea that the fittest individual survives was first documented by Charles Darwin in the 1800s during his travels around the Galapagos Islands, where he coined survival of the fittest, which was essentially the Hunger Games before J-Lo was a thing. Darwin observed the inheritance of useful traits from parent to child and discerned much about evolution and the role of the environment in natural selection, whilst not really knowing much about genes or mutations. Flash forward to the 1930s, geneticist Theodosius Dobzhansky pioneers the discipline of evolutionary genetics by reconciling Darwin's evolutionary theories with genetic inheritance. While Dobzhansky only suspected this at the time, just like our dogs and cats, Fruit flies show genetic variation through their polymorphic chromosomal structure and different gene arrangements on their third chromosome. If nucleotides were letters, chromosome inversions involve the breaking, rearranging, and rejoining of chromosomal segments in a different order. Flashing forward again, in 1947, no agreement to the role played by natural selection and evolution had yet been reached, with speculations resting only on deductions from indirect evidence. Yet, Dobzhansky's observation of natural populations of fruit flies undergoing rapid adaptive changes in the wild allowed his controlled experiments to take the place of speculation. In his travels from Canada to Mexico, he explored the genesis of adaptation through his analysis of genes in wild fly populations, further investigating how seasonal changes drive adaptation and selection across generations. By collecting population samples from three localities on Mount San Jacinto in California, he studied cyclic modifications of allele frequencies of different gene arrangements from each population. In his controlled population cages, Dobzhansky observed the frequent interbreeding of flies with different gene arrangements. From this, he found an excess of inversion heterozygotes over homozygotes, and subsequently, the persistence of an inversion polymorphism in fruit fly populations. As natural selection does not affect alleles which bring about polymorphisms, Dobzhansky came to acknowledge the environmental sensitivity of inversion hetero and homozygotes, and took knowledge he would later use in pursuing seasonal variation and genetic drift in flies. His results further showed evidence of selection, wherein different arrangements were favoured or discriminated against by their environment. Yet, in a fusion of population and evolutionary genetics, Dobzhansky observed the establishment of an equilibrium where all gene arrangements were retained in the final population, just at different frequencies. Despite deviating from the expected Hardy-Weinberg proportions, this again supported the excess of inversion heterozygotes, the adaptive inferiority of homozygotes, and the presence of a balanced chromosomal polymorphism in wild populations. Dobzhansky's investigations bridged the gap between laboratory experimentation and field naturalism. Because of him, today we can appreciate chromosomal inversions as key adaptive machinery that help flies cope with seasonal fluctuations and the diversity of their environments. We continue to observe coexisting gene arrangements in natural populations, as well as their adaptation to natural and complex environments, all without the depletion of heritable variation that often comes with such adaptations. With diversified papers spanning decades, Dobzhansky's findings remain unified by the theme of biological evolution and make him not just a member of evolutionary genetics, but a leader of it. His fusion of scientific disciplines to provide explanations of mutation and natural selection and evolutionary change make his work transformative in its capacity to provide a basis for future investigation. So remember, genetics underpins a lot of our natural world, and for our understanding of such, we can partly thank Dobzhansky.